I give salam to my people in Bangladesh. Salam to the people of Marrakesh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. We're here with Jaden. How are you doing, Jaden? I'm all right, and you? You're good, yeah? Should we have a quick arm wrestle? <laughs> no, joking. <laughs> Jaden, how you doing? I'm all right, and you? Yeah, good, man. Not bad. It's hot, isn't it? It's bare hot. You know. But man's not hot. <laughs> I'm joking. So, yeah, basically, um, he was walking. I think one of the brothers gave you a leaflet. Yeah, exactly. I've got it here. So, what was that about? Okay, so this is called Life After Life. Yeah. So, do you believe in a, in, in another life after we die? Not resurrection. Uh, I mean, I not know what you mean, not, like not 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 coming like back to this life. Kind of thing. Being judged, the judgment, heaven, hell. Do you believe in this? I believe. I'm, I'm very unsure. I'm, okay, you're unsure. Okay, okay. That's fine. All right, that's good for your honesty. So basically, you said you're a Christian. You went to church. Not really, okay. but I've definitely attended quite a bit. Like back home, St. Lucia, I went a tiny bit. I went to one or two sessions yeah. recently, that's it. Not, not in those sessions, did you express to them that your belief in Jesus? Like, did you? I, I, always, I question everything that I, I get taken, Good. I get given. Good, okay. So, so whenever I see something and I'm a bit unsure, yeah. I'll ask, especially when it comes to like prophets and why they okay. never come, carried on to Muslim and why okay. just, stuff, just stuff like that. Okay, interesting. So when you asked the pastor or the priest about your belief, what did he say? Like when you said that you don't believe, you don't take... I, I never explicitly expressed that. Oh, you didn't express that, okay. The only, the only ma major question I remember asking him was, can anyone else be a prophet? Does okay. that make sense? So, so what was the reply? He said, in a way, anyone can be a prophet because all of the books in the Bible give you the answers that all the past prophets had okay. for you to then become a prophet. Okay, we, we don't believe anybody can be a prophet. No, no, not explicitly, he said like theoretically. I don't want to mix up his words. Okay, so is yeah. it the same way you say, for example, so you believe can Jesus... the Bible. Okay, That's so do you meant. believe Jesus, you said you believe Jesus to be son of God, but not in the, obviously not in the literal sense, but do you believe him, for example, to be a prophet? Yeah. Okay, so if you believe him to be a prophet, do you believe Jesus is God? Do I believe Jesus is God? I'm... Well, you can't if you believe he's a prophet. The way I look at it is that, I said this before, if you have a son, yeah. inside of your son is basically you. That's how I look at everyone. Okay. So I that's true. That's true. There's basically good inside of everyone. Biologically. In that, like, in that sense. Yeah, DNA. It's okay. But, but to say that you literally are God, yeah. I don't I, I personally don't see it that way. Okay, can I ask you what you would say in this correct partially, why do you feel that Jesus is not God? What what makes you think internally mm, Jesus can't be God? What is it internally? Before I start speaking, because I wanna know internally. like what is it internally that you're like, hmm, Jesus cannot be God? Why? Like not in the why like prove me why he's God, but what's making you reject him being God? I, I wouldn't necessarily, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily use the word reject, but it's more that like I don't see God doing that. Okay, good. Doing what? Becoming Jesus. Okay, good. So now we believe in Islam something called the fitra. The fitra is something which is your innate disposition. You're created with this innate program. This innate program, God has created you in that way to distinguish certain things very clearly. So either you pollute it or you purify it. Now, the way you purify it is very simple. That you reject that anything besides the true God is to be worshipped. And the way you pollute it is by somebody comes and says, you know what, God is a man, or God is a statue, or God is this person, or God is this. Then what you do is you say, well, hold on a second. Let me believe that because it goes along with my desires. Or, I, or my forefathers, my dad's believed this, so let me believe it, yeah? So now what we're seeing is that we believe, and like you said, you can't fathom God being Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was a human. How could God become a human? Right? So God created the heavens and the earth, all of this. Can you imagine him coming to his creation, like me and you, flesh and bone, breathing, eating, sleeping, using the toilet? Does this befit his majesty? I don't know how to answer that question. So I, I don't want to just give you an answer without thinking about it. Cause sure, okay, take time to think about it, yeah? While you're thinking about it, just, just, just ponder upon what I said. So I'll say it again. 
does it befit the one who's created the heavens and the earth, all of this, and the universe is trillions of times bigger than our planet? Does it befit that creator who's designed us in such a magnificent way, who gives us this air to breathe, the water to drink, the food to eat, the sustenance you know that we have? confuses me about the whole Bible? I, I don't want to say it against or for just no, no, you're just being confusion. Neutral. Yeah, is that I'm pretty sure I don't know. I, I might be interpreting it wrong, but Jesus yeah. spoke to God when He was going through things. Yeah. So okay. if you're speaking to God in heaven, yeah. then you wouldn't be because you're speaking. Thank you. That's how I look at it. Okay, so this is what you're saying makes very rational sense. In the mountain of Gethsemane, Jesus fell in prostration. Did you see me praying a minute ago? I, I never ever came in time. Okay, no problem. I was praying just before, just as you arrived. Yeah. He prayed like I prayed. He went on, 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 and put his head on the floor. The question is, who was he praying to? And, and in the Bible, he refers to God as the Father. Exactly. He always refers to the Father. They, you know, they said to him, oh, good master, what must I do to gain heaven? He said, what do you, why do you call me good? There is only one good and that's God alone. So he's always referring the credit back to God, back to the Father. So the question is, if somebody keeps referring the credit back, so if you come and say to me, Ali, you changed my life, man, so thank you very much. And I go, bro, it wasn't me. It was Mohammed Ijab. And you're like, yo, Ali, I'm like, yo, yo, listen, it was Mohammed Ijab, it was Mohammed Ijab, it was Mohammed Ijab, my friend, let's say, yeah? You're going to start saying, you know what, well, well forget Ali then. Let me go to Mohammed Ijab, because if all the good works that's been done by Ali and the credit is actually his friend who's teaching him, let me go to the, the, the root, yeah? So that's exactly what Jesus is doing. He's always giving credit to, to the, the Father. father. To He's always giving credit. So, yeah. so what we're seeing is if that's the case, that shows, number one, he never claims to be God. Number two, he has no characteristics that make him God. Yeah? Him bringing life to the, uh, life, giving, uh, life to the dead. Yeah? Curing people who had illness. He did all of that with the permission of God, but not by, him, by his own self. So uh, as Muslims, what we believe, Jaden, is very simple. Worship God alone. This is the fundamental message, not in, the, not in the Quran, also in the Bible. Because in the Bible, one of the commandments is what? Do not worship other gods. I, God, am a jealous God. Go to the Old Testament, go and speak to the Jews. The Jews don't believe God to be a man. They outright reject it. Go to nations before, yeah? Yes, a lot of them were involved in polytheism, but majority, uh, a lot of them also believed in the oneness of God. So what God is saying is he wants a relationship with you. But he's saying, in, in Islam, what we believe is worship him alone. Don't go and worship Muhammad, our prophet, peace be upon him, the final prophet. We believe Jesus to be a prophet. We believe in his miraculous birth. We honor his mother. We've got a whole chapter about his mother. Yeah? So what we're seeing is very simple. God wants eternal bliss for you. All he's asking you, Jaden, is be loyal to him. Be grateful to him. Acknowledge his blessings he's given you. He doesn't want much. He's saying acknowledge who he is. Don't go to Jesus. Don't go to Muhammad. Don't go to Moses. Don't go to Abraham. Don't go to none of these prophets. Ask me alone. Now, when you go to the church, what do they say? They make a prayer, prayer, prayer in Jesus' name. Why in Jesus' name? What has Jesus done for you? Like, when you need something, is it Jesus who's going to give you or is it going to be God? So if, it is, if it's God, why are you going to Jesus? So that's number one. The fundamental message in Islam is what? Worship God alone. Can we have, can we have one Quran? Hey, how you doing? Uh, can we have one Quran? Can we have one Quran, please? Thanks, bro. Thanks. Okay, do, do me a favor, yeah? Open the Quran, deep inside you first, make a prayer. Just pray to God and say, God, if this is your way, if this is the truth, show me a sign. And then I want you to open the Quran, yeah? So take your time, don't rush. Have we got extra water? Yeah, there's water, bro. Yeah, do you want water? Right, take your time, take your time. Right. Yeah, some water as well. It's just, he's making a prayer, he's making a prayer. Let's get it. Uh, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, whenever. Okay, you want water? Yeah. Okay, that's Thank all. you. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Well, you're having a break. We've got to have a sometimes break and, you know, <laughs> we focus. <laughs> ready, go. <laughs> yeah. If you want, you can put it down. You don't drink it all at once. No, nah, I know. Yeah, I, mean, no, I know. Take I'm it, take away. It. And I like the way you drink. The prophet used to drink. <laughs> he sipped as well. Yeah, but he used to sit down and drink as well. There's some narration that he stood up as well. So you've got some the prophetic tradition there. Right? <laughs> you know what's funny? Yeah. When I was younger, yeah. 
I wanted to be a prophet, literally. You want you wanted to be a prophet? Until until I realised that after Jesus you literally couldn't be, or after Muhammad, I don't know which yeah, one. Yeah, no one can be a prophet in the sense where look, you can like for example, we are messages, we convey the message of prophets book. Yeah, that's that's exactly what the if that's what you mean. Yeah, the, yeah, the of course. Says. You can, you never know. You might accept Islam, you might be out here doing what we're doing, you know what I'm saying? But from what I heard it's for you to literally become a like from yeah. in the past whatever. Yeah. Is prophets, God literally prophets, came, God literally spoke to you and prophet, made you do this. Prophets right chose. They didn't choose to be a prophet. They were chosen. That's to what be I'm prophet. saying. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can't. I wanted to be a prophet, but I realized. Yeah. Oh yeah. What I came to the conclusion was yeah. that I can't be a prophet unless God literally. Exactly. And and, and, and and God has said in the Quran that there are going to be no more prophets. Exactly. So it's done. Yeah. But anyways, like you you said, so to open the Quran in a random place, pick a verse. Let's read it together. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Open any verse. Yeah? I don't want to cause fitna for the sisters. <laughs> I opened it like three times. Let me just open it. All right. Okay, all right. Pick a, pick a, pick a, right. 285. Yeah, the, the page. Oh, no, no, no. Pick a verse. 89. 89, yeah? Okay, let's read it. Let's see which verse, which chapter it is. This is Surah, Surah Kaf. Yeah, so this talks about the, the story in the Bible uh, about the people in the cave. Yeah, so it's what similar. Part of the, when, uh, sorry? When was this in the Bible? That there, 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 is, there, is some, there is some stories about it as well. So this is what this is what the story talks about. Oh. These people. So for example, there was about, I think, six of them. Um, actually, no, no, no. I don't know if the number is sure. No one knows how many number, how many they were. Yeah. Um, so what it was was these were people who worshipped God alone, mm -hmm. but the nation that they lived in were polytheists. They were worshipping statues and other stuff. Oh, was this uh, when uh, they, the flood? Was this around then? Uh, or was this another time? No, that's no Noah's time. Because no, Noah's Because there's so many times in the Bible yes, and, yes. and the other. Where yes. That so this one, they had to run away from this because they were going to be this killed. Or this when they turned to stone? Huh? When they were doing all of the nastiness, so then they got turned to stone. That means no, sand no, 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 or no, no, salt. no, not the, uh, not the, the uh, no, um, lot. No, 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 not that. So basically, this was a time where they were going through the same thing, and they had to run, run to a cave and hide there because they were going to be persecuted and killed. Yeah. Right. So you went to verse eighty-nine. Yeah. Yeah. Then. And then he followed. Then he followed away. Okay, interesting. Okay. Until when he came to the rising of the sun, he found it rising on a people for whom we had not made against it any shield. Thus, and we have encompassed all that he had in his knowledge. Then he followed the way, until when he reached a pass between the two mountains, he found beside them a people who could hardly understand his speech. They said, O Dhul indeed Gog and Magog are great com uh, corruptors in the land. So may we assign for you an expended chart that you might make, make between, them and, and between them and us a barrier. So we believe in, you know Gog and Magog? Gog and um, Magog. We call him Yajuj and I think it's mentioned in the Bible as well. Yeah? So Dhul is the one who may basically put a barrier between uh, them because they, they believe they're going to come back. He said that in which my Lord has established me is better than what you offer, but assist me with the strength uh, and manpower. I will make between you and them a dam. So this is talking about a story. Bring me irons, bring me iron until when he had leveled them between the two mountains walls, he said, blow with a bit until when, we, when he made it like fire. He said, bring me that may pour over it molten copper. So this was a nation who, who were causing great corruption. So Dhul Qarnayn came and basically, by the permission of God, put a barrier uh, between them and us, the whole nation. And the but barrier be, was water. The barrier was molten iron. Molten iron. But there's going to come a time where they're going to come out and they're going to be a humongous army that's going to basically kill everybody. Dhul Qarnayn said, this is a mercy for my Lord. But when the promise of my Lord comes, he will make it level and ever is the promise of my Lord true. Meaning, he's done something with the permission of God. But when the time comes, basically, when God brings a time where they're going to come out from their place, that's it. He has no power over that. So very interestingly here, he is doing something with the power of God, right? So who does the credit go to? Him, the person, his name is Dhul Qarnayn. So he's the one who made the molten iron etc and hit this group of people yeah now he's saying that when the time comes and god wills they are going to come out so that he's saying that's outside my power yeah and we will leave them that day surging over each other and the horn will be blown and he will assemble them in one assembly so
So when these people come out, it's one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. And we believe the horn, there's an angel who will be who blow the horn and everybody on earth, everybody will die. And then he will blow the horn again and all of us are going to be resurrected. Right? Let's just carry on. And we will present hell, hell that day to the disbelievers as display. Those whose eyes had been had been with the cover from my remembrance, they were not able to hear. So God's saying that certain disbelievers are going to have certain um, senses taken away from them because of their disbelief. Okay, so they, this might be their sight, this might be their hearing. So the point that here is the story is saying is that there are people like some people even talk about Dulqanin. Was he a prophet or not? Yeah, which is very interesting. We're talking about who? His name is Dhul Qarnayn. That's his name, yeah? Mm -hmm. So some people, scholars talk, was this man a prophet? Was he not a prophet? Which is interesting because we're talking about prophets as well, yeah? So <laughs> there, 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 there might be a little sign, there might be interesting because it went straight to that. So there's a discussion, was he a prophet, was he not a prophet? But what we do know is that he did something with the permission of God and when God's uh, day comes, passes, they're going to come out. And then God is talking about on the day of judgment, yeah? Then, to, then, then do those who disbelieve think that they can make my servants is, instead of me as allies. Indeed, we have prepared hell for the disbelievers as, as a lodging. So in a nutshell, there is going to be a day, day of judgment. Okay. And on that day, we are all going to be resurrected. And one of the main things that's going to be asked us is that did we worship God alone? Okay. Those who come and say, oh, I believe Jesus was God. What's going to ask them? Who told you Jesus was God? Did Jesus tell you he was God? Where in the Bible, is there any word in the Bible, any statement in the Bible, that Jesus said, I am God? There is none. So the question is, why are Christians worshipping him? Why are they worshipping him? And that goes back to desires. Yeah? For whatever reason, they, they take that. When Jesus never said that for himself. So that's why the Quran came to correct the Christians and tell them to come to the correct path. You know? Yeah, in, in, in a nutshell, like, that, that's, that's what it is, it's Muslim. Do you have any questions? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to take in everything that you've said so no far. No problem. Do you have, okay, so, Honestly. yeah, in a nutshell, like I said, we believe in one God. We believe all the prophets that were sent, Jesus, Moses, Abraham, um, Adam, Noah, Lot, all of these people were prophets. They came with a, one fundamental message, worship God alone. There is one God, there's not two gods, there's no three gods, there's one God and he's deserving of worship. And the Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger. When the Bible got corrupted, God Almighty sent the final Prophet with the final Quran, uncorrupted, unchanged, yeah? To the whole of mankind, so that you can worship him and him alone. That is the message of Islam. Thank you. So yeah, it, absorb it, I'll give you these two. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. But read the Quran, have you got a Quran? No. Okay, no problem, we'll give it to you as a gift. Bro. Yeah, 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 thank you, man. It's a pleasure. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here usually every Saturday. Saturday. Every Saturday, yeah. From 1 p.m. to about 8. What's your name again, my Ali. Ali. Yeah, on YouTube, Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for the talk. No problem, man. If I'm listening. No, no, it's a pleasure, man. We're here for you. How old are you? 18. Oh, that's good. You're young. So, yeah, but have that connection with God. Pray to Him. Ask Him. Ask Him for guidance. He'll guide you. The thing is, I, I try not to. Not try not to, but it's not necessarily pray. What I do is I'll, I'll just tell God I trust Him. I trust That's His good. guidance. That's, That's I'd good. rather, I don't want to be, I know it says in almost all the things, ask God, ask God, but yeah. I'd rather just put my faith in Him, my trust in Him, and I just do what I need to do whilst also thinking. 100%. And I but feel have like that, He will show me. 100%. But have that relationship with Him. Ask Him. God owns all of this. Feel free to ask Him. Ask Him whatever you like. Yeah? yeah. Ask Him and He will guide you. He will give you. You know, if he believes that what you need, what you want is good for you. If he believes it's not good for you, he's not going to give you something you think is good. When in fact, in fact it's bad. So yeah, that's it, man. No problem, man. Look after yourself. Take care. Take care. Look after yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Don't worry. Take care. Yeah, I get stuff. Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care. Look after yourself. Jaden, make sure you pray for him as well. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him, inshallah. We're here, Jaden. Look after yourself. Take care. Take care. Nice pleasure, man.